This is a demonstration of a Vue.js application interacting with a RESTful backend. In demoing this application, we start with an empty list of to-dos, and the text no items added yet appears. And that's mirroring logic behind the state of this empty to-dos array uh, in the view store. I'll add a few items. And those items show up in the view store. And I'm going to cross-reference them with Ready API, which is a tool that issues web requests to a RESTful backend. So it functions like the browser, but this does not involve view. And you'll see that those items appear here when I retrieve them. Uh, they're being retrieved as JSON. If I go back to the application, I can delete an item. And checking on the back end, you'll see that the item is deleted. And I can also go in and make an edit. I can turn an item done. So pay bills, which was previously false, is now set to true. I can make an edit to the text as well. And you'll notice that it's in the view store and it's also made it to the back end. Now I can also go into the back end and add an item. That item successfully added and when I come back into the application and refresh we get a new item. And similarly, behind the scenes, I can go and update an item. And when I come back to the UI and refresh, that item's been updated. Let's look a little bit at the design of this application. Uh, we're looking at a UML diagram. And on the left-hand side, you see the three components of the view application. And if you're coming to this demo with a view background, I'm just working with a single app instance, a single view app instance, and it's backed by a store instance. The view app instance has a single item uh, new to do in its um, data list of properties. Uh, and this is backing up the to do section uh, of the form, the add section. The to do's, the data store that we're managing, is using vu, a view or vu, view.store, and that object contains the data for the application. Now it's not as apparent in the simple demo why that would be a value, but as your application grows larger, you'll want to factor out data into a central point so that it's easier to maintain. So if you could picture many dozens of HTML files and many components all needing the same data, then the value of a centralized store becomes apparent. But view itself doesn't, uh, the store, doesn't add any persistence. Sure, your requests are going to survive um, interactions with it, events, etc., but they don't find their way to a backend where they can be shared with other applications, data exports, or other um, systems. So on the right-hand side, you'll see a Java EE, um, a Java EE uh, RESTful web service. And I wrote an article on this. I'll put a link to, the, um, to that article if you want to look a little more into Java EE. But my intent is more to show the view design with this demonstration. So let's look at some view code. In the index.html, I've got all of my uh, HTML5 controls, and they're bound to models, and they're bound to properties. We start off with the to-do list. And when I started the demo and had no uh, records in the database, um, you were seeing this um, no items added yet message. And that's keying off of something that's in the view store, which is the uh, a length check on the to-dos array. Uh, as I started adding items, well, that length went up, and it triggered this uh, unordered list and these list items. 
Now the list items is also uh, keyed off of the to-dos array. And you'll notice that it's going through this getters. I'll show you the view code in a second, the view store code in a second. Uh, it's not going directly at the data structure maintained by the store. So that's an important uh, design consideration uh, so that you don't have side effects going through your application. Now, going back to the user interface, uh, we looked at the new to-do add. When I add an item in here, I'm changing the uh, view instance state. And so when I put an item here, you'll see that there's an add do, uh, event. And if I look in the components, the root component, I have, uh, I've cleared it out, but initially this new to-do contained the data. Uh, it was then conveyed over to the view instance and found its way into the store. And we'll look at that in just a second. Um, checkbox and text. These are other input controls, but I've got to do something special with them. Uh, one interesting thing to note with the store is it seems like a step back but the form binding is a little less straightforward than it is if you were using solely the view app instance and that's because the view model view dash model gives you a bi-directional data binding uh, and that you can't have with view because you can't dig into the exact state of that um, of that data uh, so rather what I'm doing is I'm binding, I'm binding some, some values that I'll be unpacking later in a pair of methods called set done and set text. So th that's going to be how I handle the update. And I'll show you the code for that in just a second. Well, for both the add and the to do the delete, those are a little more straightforward. They really are just taking in the delete case an ID and that ID is um, being used uh, as the basis of a RESTful web service call. Similar the, to, to the, um, uh, the new to-do is also uh, calling a method, um, but it's going to turn around and use this new to-do item. So both of the delete and the add to-do are uh, listening for a click event on a button. In the case of the delete to-do, we're going to pass along the data that's found in this iteration. Um, Really, the ID is all that's needed for the delete. And with the add, we're going to we're not assigning an ID because that's coming from the back end. Uh, and we're also going to assume that the done is false. So really, what the add is going to do is it's going to go back over this new to do item. It'll find it set correctly, and then it's going to use it to communicate uh, with the store and then onto the web service. OK, well, let's look at some of the uh, JavaScript code. I'm going to skip down to the app instance and you'll see that we have a store configured and the app instance manages a single piece of data called create uh, to do. When I load the application, uh, I'm going to make this fetch to do's call on the store. And this is what propagates the list of um, items from the persistent store. Initially that was empty, but then as I did subsequent refreshes, for example, I'll refresh right here. It's contacting the back end and then filling up this uh, HTML5 document. Uh, so the add to do method is using the data that's been bound to new to do. It's using that and a default value of false to set up this add to do call uh, that'll be done on the store. So one scrap of data um, is retrieved, uh, and I'm defaulting the other one. It will we'll always be adding items that haven't been completed yet. And then uh, this is just a, a UI thing at the end. I'm clearing it out. I don't have to, have to reset it, but I figure the user will want to have that empty so that they can enter the next, uh, the next item. And we'll show you the to-do on the store in just a second. Uh, delete is similar. Uh, delete uh, is delegates immediately to the um, to the store, uh, and its its event um, or its ID is captured into this to do item. Now, set done and set text are similar, and I mentioned um, that there was some indirection that's involved, and that's because with the view model, uh, we don't want to bind directly to this to the to the store variable. But, uh, the way we would if we were using a uh, property in a data item. Uh, rather, what we're doing is we're going to make this to-do call. It's conditional because they're essentially the same call, but they're varying the arguments that they're passed. And what this update to-do does is it goes 
to view using the proper getters and it retrieves the current record which we're going to update. Uh, and if that record's found, which it always ought to be, we're going to make a decision and, and form our arguments based on what was passed in. So in the case of set done, we take the done value that was passed in and we retain the text value. So what I'm going to send over in the update is a full complement of values, despite the fact that only one value is going to be changed at a time. Either you're unchecking the box and doing an update, or you're entering uh, new text and doing an update. Well, let's take a look at that in the application. So if I check the box here, I do an update to do, and the third item goes true, and I can look at my RESTful web service, and sure enough, that is set to true. Going back to the application, if I edit the text and add some numbers in here and hit return to commit it, I have a change that's taking place. And you can see in the view store that that has been updated. And you can go into the RESTful web service and you can see that that's been updated. So let's look at the uh, store now. Um, I've got a few interactions with it from my view app instance. I fetch data from it. I add a record to it, I delete a record to it, and then I update a record having formed and extracted the proper um, operations. Um, so going to the actions, I'm using Axios to communicate with the back end, and it's pretty straightforward. These are just URLs that map uh, in, a, in a straightforward manner to a, um, a, a to-dos URL. Uh, two of the URLs for the delete and the update are going to use the identifier and then add and update are passing a JSON payload that's going to be the full, the full item. So the fetch to do's, that one doesn't take any, um, any uh, input parameters. That's just simply going to invoke the RESTful web service and then return the data, which will get put into the, uh, the backing array. The add to do does a post. Uh, this is a convention that I set up in all my RESTful web services. Uh, when I want to add an item, I use a post. Uh, there's n not an identifier um, because it's generated um, after the operation. Um, so I pass in the payload and I use this post. Uh, on the deleted item, uh, there's no payload to pass, but rather I unpack an ID and I use that into the deleted um, URL using a HTTP delete. And then finally for the update, that's a put, and I'm putting the entire record. Uh, remember, even if I've set the done and not changed the text, or set the text and not change the done, I'm sending a complete record over. So you, you'll see that this is applicable to both the set done and the set text function. Uh, and then I have a getter. Uh, the getter is just returning the array. And then going up into the um, mutations, um, the add is doing a push. The delete is removing, um, is filtering an item. Uh, actually, it's keeping all the items that are not the ones that I'm deleted. Uh, the set to do's, that's a, just a straightforward um, assignment. And then finally, for this update to do, I'm retrieving the index for the item and I'm using the splice to set the actual item in the state. Um, so rather than trying to manipulate the individual fields, I'm just replacing the item in total. Um, this is just going to capture the single change because if you were to add up the data items in any of the updates that I've done to this point you would see that the um, you would see that the, the done comes in in one call with the text preserved and the text comes in uh, with the text change but the done preserved so I'm trying to uh, throughout my application keep a consistent update because there may be a case for me to send both items over uh, and I'll, I'll reconcile that kind of thing in the uh, view layer with logic like this, but our store doesn't need to change. So this is a presentation of the um, a RESTful backend and a Vue.js application, and it works, uh, in my opinion, very, very well. Uh, the view tools are great. Um, I'm operating in strict mode, and you can see that there are no errors here. Uh, when you work with the view store, it can be um, you, it can be a little confusing because on the one hand we're encouraged to use this great V model data binding but you can see here with the update that I've wanted to do something else. So I'll put some links into uh, further um, 
articles that are going to explain this and and we'll present the code so you don't have to freeze it on any particular screen but rather just take this as a walkthrough of some different parts of a um, fully functional application <laughs> Thank you.